Hey guys, I'm Bailey and welcome to the very first Tech a Seat. Hey guys, so today we have a lot to talk about. Um, the tech world has exploded since last Rant Room, which I know there's been a lot of time since we posted that. Sorry about that. But anyways, let's go on. The Samsung Galaxy S6 is a competitor with the new LG G4, which I will touch on a little bit later. Uh, GLG Galaxy, Steam competitor, hopefully. And the Canon T6S and T6i are launched, which I'm freaking excited about because swag, we got new Rebels. Who doesn't want that? And more. So, let's get into it. First off, the LG G4 is an amazing phone that I'm looking forward to, and I'm probably going to get it when it comes out in June. Um, there's a lot of reviews of it online right now, and the 4K video looks awesome, and everything about the camera looks awesome. And I think it outdoes the Samsung Galaxy S6's camera, um, just due to more accuracy in the camera's optics. And the S6 really tends to oversaturate things and just make things more vibrant than they really are. <laughs> but overall, the G4 looks like a really promising camera phone, and phone overall. It's got an 808 6-core processor, which some people might complain about, but I see no problem in that because rumors are that they kept with the 808 instead of the 810 due to overheating issues in the G Flex 2. And they optimized the processor really well from what I've seen to keep the phone running smooth and feeling good. The S6 is also a promising contender, but I personally can't stand touch with, with my past experiences. So I'm really looking forward to the G4 and its UX 4.0 on top of the Android Lollipop. But anyways, that thing lets you take raw pictures as well as JPEG, so that's going to be awesome for any of you photographers out there. And all the manual mode features of the G4 are going to be promising for every DSLR user out there. So that'll let you adjust a lot, and it allows 2 terabytes of storage through the micro SD card expandable stuff. So in case you want to install everything on the Google Play Market, then, you know, do that, be swag. But there aren't even 2 terabyte micro SDs yet anyways, and they're going to be really expensive when they launch. So, that's going to be needed for the raw photos. But now let's get on to our next topic, the GOG Galaxy. Oh my gosh, I hope this thing succeeds because Steam has been the leading PC game seller and provider for years now. And they're... There is Origin, there is Ubisoft's uh, Uplay, but they're both linked to their own studios very tightly. Origin with EA and Uplay with Ubisoft, of course, and they're both very strongly linked to those and strong with Battlefield and Assassin's Creed and those types of games, so their online uh, capabilities aren't that great because of a lack of players on there and just a lack of other content. But Steam has always been the leading game seller for PC, so I'm really looking forward to GOG Galaxy and hope it can bring us some solid content. Because it is owned by the guys who are behind the Witcher series, and they are a gaming uh, creator, but that's not a big deal to me because it's not like they're making a whole bunch of other games, they're just, their main focus is the Witcher, so I'm fine with them putting that out, and then hopefully they can bring in other games and become a real Steam competitor to get those prices and Steam sales going even higher because that's going to be great. Next thing I want to talk about is the release of the Canon T6S and T6i. They look to be very promising cameras with brand new sensors on them and if I was looking between the T6i and T6S I would personally go for the T6S because it's only $100 more and you get that top LCD and servo autofocus as well so that's going to be great for you guys and I'm really looking forward to the T6S which we should have in a little bit right a damn. Yes! Boom. Because this T4 has trash. Oh, uh, <laughs> not really. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, the, the release of the R9 300 series is to come, and I can't wait for that. Um, of course, it's going to be mostly rebrands, which we've come to expect from AMD. I'm disappointed in that, but at least we're getting something new from them because I really hope that they keep on their force pushing against NVIDIA for good competition and good prices, because I don't want them to know, please. Okay, so moving on to our next topic, Windows 10 is going to be the last version of Windows to be released, which is kind of a big deal. Windows 10 being the last version, that means we're probably going to see more just small updates, not so much incremental, huge updates. Um, 
coming from Windows, which will be good and bad depending on which way you see it. If you enjoy Windows 10, which I, from the Windows 10 preview that I've been using on my laptop, I love that thing. And I really look forward to that. But it might get a little old after a few years, so I can't see them really sticking to this be the last version of major Windows release. And we should be getting good updates for drivers constantly from them every day almost. Um, next thing I want to hit, Fixstar plans to release the 6 terabyte SSD, which brings up the topic of SSDs becoming mainstream and hard drives going out of the era just of computers basically. So that's pretty cool that they have a 6 terabyte SSD coming out. That's a huge storage size for an SSD and it's great to see people doing that. But I think we might still be seeing hard drives for quite a bit simply because they're cheaper and they're just so affordable for uh, people just starting out and there's nothing really wrong with them and they offer a lot of storage for the price. Finally, I want to go over Android M coming out, um, which we just got Android Lollipop, doesn't seem like too long ago, so to me it's like a really fast update. It should be coming soon, at least a previews of it, and that's really exciting. And what could it be called? Android M? Is it going to be marshmallow, macadamia nut, cookie, Penis. maple syrup, maple syrup, <laughs> yeah. mud pie, marmalade, mango, mahi mahi? <laughs> Oh wait, those last three weren't even desserts. Oh, okay. It's gonna be marshmallow, because if it's not, I'm gonna be disappointed. And now finally, onto our last segment of Take a Seat is the question of the day. With phones like the G4 and the Samsung Galaxy S6 packing six cores and eight cores, does the upcoming 818 excite you with 10 cores? Or are we just needlessly killing off our battery life with these high power processors? as far as Android's capabilities and our phone's capabilities are concerned as of today. Also, speaking of killing off battery life, are we killing it off with this QHD movement and the possible UHD movement that's coming up? I don't know. So you guys answer that down below in the comments. Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then please leave me a thumbs up down below to let me know that I did a good job. If I did not, however, then you know, just leave a thumbs down and let me know that I need to improve a little bit. And slap the subscribe button while you're down there to see our future content and join the Adam and Bailey community where all are created equal, but some are created a little bit more equal, namely Adam and I. Hey. <laughs> You didn't even join in with me. <laughs> <laughs>